guys, Crystal here. Welcome to episode 3 of Learning Everything About Frostpunk. Today we are going to be going over the heating in Frostpunk, and we're going to try to cover everything about heating. Uh, so let's talk about what heating is. Well, when you click this little button, you can see the heat of everything in your city, and uh, everything has its own temperature. Your city has a main temperature. Uh, let's go ahead and just talk about all of that. So. The temperature of your city can range anywhere from negative 20 clear down to negative 150. Part of the Frostpunk experience is learning about these temperatures, what they do, how they affect your citizens, and trying to mitigate the damage of the temperature and controlling the effects of it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop up a little graphic on the screen here. And uh, this little graphic, as you'll see, will show all the different temperatures in Frostpunk. Uh, basically, you can control uh, how the temperature affects your citizens by adjusting the temperature of things to uh, various degrees. And you'll see here on screen that if things are red, they are comfortable. Uh, the effects of this are it prevents people from getting ill. Uh, things can also be... Uh, Livable, which is uh, level one heating. Comfortable is level two. Livable is level one. Uh, we'll talk about these levels in just a moment. Livable pretty much means very few people are going to get ill. Uh, level zero is negative 20 degrees, and people have a low risk of getting ill if they're in that environment. Cold is negative level negative one, and people have a moderate chance of getting ill if they're in that environment. Uh, very cold is negative level two and people have uh, a very high risk of getting ill and a low risk of becoming gravely ill if they're in that environment if they're in freezing which is uh level negative three clear down to level negative 11 negative 50 to negative 150 degrees uh well they're gonna probably get very ill they're probably gonna get gravely ill they're probably gonna get amputations and you're not gonna have a good time uh, your goal in Frostpunk is to keep everything at chilly or above. Uh, why should you care about temperature? Two main reasons. Uh, one, it keeps people from getting sick if you keep the temperature up in these top three comfortable, livable, chilly. And uh, the other reason you need to worry about temperature is because there are certain buildings like the medical post, for example, that only operate at chilly or above. So that should be your main goal in this, uh, in all of your Frostpunk games, is to keep temperatures at chilly or above. That's zero degrees, negative 10 degrees, and negative 20 degrees. And you'll see uh, these levels all correlate to exact temperatures. Uh, so yeah, your, your goal is kind of just to keep the temperature as high as possible. All right, so how can you see what temperature something is? Well, you can click on the temperature gauge and it'll show you. You can hover over something with the temperature gauge active and it'll show you. This is very cold. This is comfortable. This is livable. This pop-up will not appear if you are not in temperature gauge mode. See, it's a different pop-up tool tip. But if you're in temperature mode, you can hover over something and it'll show you the temperature gauge. Likewise, you can just click on something and the temperature gauge will be right here and it'll show you. These colors that you see right here correlate directly to these colors that you see up here at the top of the screen. Red, yellow, light blue, blue, dark blue, and purple. This one's light blue, that's chilly. And you can see there on the left, there's modifiers. Negative three, plus one, plus one, plus one for a total of zero. So the total is level zero, which is chilly, which is negative 20 degrees. People working in this hothouse have a slight chance of getting ill. So uh, you can kind of figure it out. You can add up the numbers yourself, but you don't need to. It tells you what the thing is. And on this one, it's chilly. On this one, it's livable. So you can add the numbers yourself, but they're going to add up to exactly what it is. But this is how you can tell by the temperature gauge or just by looking at the actual color and correlating it to these uh, colors up here at the top. You can, you can see what everything is and how it is. So what things actually affect the temperature in your city? Well, the first thing is weather. And you can see here on the screen, there are gauges 
what we call the weather forecasts that show when the weather is going to increase in temperature or decrease in temperature. And you should always be watching this gauge because this is going to affect uh, how well you need to prepare for things. When a temperature increase happens, everything in your city will improve by one level. That means anything that is very cold will move up one to cold. If something is livable, it will move up one to comfortable. Likewise, when the temperature decreases through weather, it will move down one level. For example, livable will move down one level and become chilly. Chilly things will move down one level and become cold. Always keep this in mind when the temperature drops and try to keep things above chilly. There are other things that affect the temperature. The next thing that we're going to talk about is the base building insulation. Let's do a, let's take a quick look at tents, bunk houses, and houses for just a moment. And you can see the difference here. Tents have a base insulation of one. You can see that in this uh, little pop-up here, plus one building insulation. Bunk houses have plus two base insulation building insulation. Houses have plus three, and they can uh, be upgraded to have an additional plus one for a total of plus four. So each building and each structure in the game has a different base heating level. Uh, I'm not going to go over what all of them are, but uh, something to keep in mind is that when you have different versions of the same building, like a coal mine, a steam coal mine, an advanced coal mine, each one is going to have better than the last. For example, a coal mine has plus one, a steam coal mine has plus two, and an advanced coal mine has plus three insulation. The better the building, the more insulation it has. Now, you can upgrade this insulation on certain structures, like medical buildings. You can get plus one base insulation with this upgrade here, plus two medical insulation with this upgrade here. Likewise, you can upgrade your insulation for houses, houses only, not tents or bunkhouses, with this upgrade here. And you can upgrade the cookhouse insulation with this upgrade here. These are the four upgrades for insulation. These are the only four upgrades for insulation. They are worth getting as your cookhouses, houses, and medical facilities are fairly important. There are other upgrades that add to insulation but that's just because it's an upgrade to a building. For example, the industrial hothouse has plus one insulation more than the hothouse. As I will show you here, the hothouse has base one plus another two from the tech. The industrial hothouse has a base two plus the two from the extra tech that I've researched. The base insulation is an important thing to keep in mind the highest insulation out of the entire game is the infirmary. Uh, it has far more insulation than anything else in the game due to the healthcare insulation technology and the base insulation of two. It's pretty darn nice. Another thing that affects a temperature of a structure is heaters. You can research your heaters in the heating tab and there are four techs for heaters. Each of these upgrades increases the base heating level of a structure by one during work hours. This is plus one, this is plus two, this is plus three. If someone is working in a structure that is say very cold and you turn on a level three heater, you can see that it's gonna go from very cold up one, up two, up three to livable. So if I turn on the heater and I employ people, it becomes livable. The heaters are only active while people are working in a facility. These techs cannot be downgraded, so uh, be careful if you're upgrading and you don't have enough coal to support level 2 heaters if you only need level 1. Likewise, if you only need level 2, be careful if you're going to upgrade to level 3. These heaters do use increased coal and there is no way to undo the research. Once it's researched, it's going to give you plus 1, plus 2, or plus 3, and you can't go back down to plus 1 if you have 3 researched. You can get this heating heater efficiency upgrade to use slightly less coal, but just be mindful that uh, 
heaters do use coal themselves. And now for the main way to generate heat, and that is with your generator. The generator itself generates heat. At the very beginning of the game, the heat it generates is going to be level one. That is going to provide plus one level of heat for anything within the heat zone created by the generator. Now this heat zone, its range you can see by this uh, striped orange outline, I guess you'd call it. Anyway, this is what's called a heat zone. And the heat zone can change in size. And the power level only affects the things that are within the heat zone. And you can see this, you can see the effects of this as I'm decreasing the heat zone, things outside of it return to having snow covering their roofs. So you can see they're not in the heat zone. When I show you the heat zone on the temperature gauge, if I increase the size, you can see which structures are affected by the range of the heat zone. Things that are in heat zones are the only things that can be affected by the power level of the generator. If something is not in a heat zone, it will not make any difference how high you have the power. It won't be affected. Now you can extend the range of this heat zone by adding steam hubs. These steam hubs, this heat zone is the same heat zone as the generator. The steam hub is just basically uh, drawing power from the generator and anything that is within the range of a steam hub is as though it were also in range of the generator. That is the purpose of steam hubs. They don't generate their own heat. They will just generate the power level heat zone of the generator itself. If your generator is putting off one heat level of power, then your steam hubs are also only going to put off one level of power. If you upgrade your generator and upgrade it to, let's say, level two, which is this upgrade here, and you turn up the power, it is going to give you plus two heat zones. And you can see that here, heat zone plus two, the generator and the steam hubs will all generate plus two heat levels for all of the structures that are within the heat zone. And I can show you that here. Dude. All right. Now, if I turn it up to level three, it's going to provide three levels. And you'll notice the tent here will increase to comfortable. And you'll see everything else get more comfortable. If I turn it up to level four, everything inside will get even hotter. And now we've got a volcano. <laughs> all heat levels are exactly the same. Notice how everything changes. Everything within the generator range, everything within steam hub range. They all share the same power. This is a common problem for newer players who don't understand how steam, how steam hubs work. They share the heat level of the generator. Steam hubs do not generate heat on their own. You get what level of power you choose from the steam level here. Level one is plus one level of heat. Level two is two levels of heat. Likewise, three is three and four is four. You can adjust the range of your heat zones to be larger or smaller by clicking on these and adjusting the range, you'll notice the range gets smaller and won't extend as far. Things that are outside of your heat zone, be it the generator or the steam hubs, if something is not in a heat zone, it will not benefit at all from the power you are putting out from the generator. If something is like out here, nothing you do with the generator is going to affect this st structure over here until it is within a heat zone. If I want it to be affected, I need to turn on this steam hub so an orange heat zone extend, expands around the structure. Now, once that happens, you'll see there is now a plus four to the heat zone. This structure is now being provided heat from the generator itself. It's good practice to have everything in your city covered by a heat zone so it can be affected by the generator if it's not well there are many scenarios within the game in which uh things just get so cold 
that things aren't going to work right and you're gonna have problems if they're not all in a heat zone as you can see here everything that I have is within a heat zone that needs to be in a heat zone things that do not need to be in a heat zone are things like large resource depots structures that are being run by automatons structures that are not being used at all things like that you don't need heat zones for those kind of structures but for places like residence you absolutely do need them in a heat zone so the generator can affect them another way to create heat is through the overdrive now i'm going to show you what the overdrive does I'm turning down the heat for just a moment so I can showcase this, and that should be good. Okay, so the overdrive, if you turn it on, it will increase all of the heat within heat zones by one level. If things are chilly, like you'll see around here, they'll become livable. There's also a tech upgrade, which I'll show you right now. That allows the overdrive to increase the temperature by two heat levels which is what I have so when I activate the overdrive you'll see this chilly area become red so let's do that right now I'm gonna click the generator and I'm gonna click overdrive things instantly increase by two levels within the heat zones this is incredibly useful especially as a last-ditch measure if you're really struggling for coal and you need an emergency way to increase your heat now the overdrive has its downsides if you uh, get to 100 percent stress level which happens after a, a little over a one in-game day well your generator explodes and your game is over so you can't really rely on that to get you out of every situation but it is useful for a short stop gap if you really need that extra heat right here right now and something's in a heat zone you could pop that overdrive and you'll get your heat and you can see uh it affects things very quickly it's far faster than manually increasing the generator level by two if you're uh let's say you have a weather drop that just dropped everything by two levels and you need to increase your heat by two levels but everything's freezing and you need that heat right now well, you can start upgrading your generator and then flip on the overdrive. Your things are already up to temperature. Then you can wait for your heat to increase by the two levels and then turn off your overdrive. And then things will be running quite smoothly. It's a good little method to keep things running, especially if things are too cold to be running. But yeah, the overdrive is an incredibly useful tool and it should definitely be utilized. Just don't forget to turn it off after a while. There is one final way to increase heat levels within your city. Uh, it's through a building called the Field Kitchen, but we're going to talk about that in a later episode that uh, has to do with the Faith Purpose Tree. We're not going to get into that right now. All right, let's reiterate everything we've learned about heating. When it comes to heating, things can be comfortable, livable, chilly, cold, very cold, or freezing. If things are comfortable, people aren't going to get sick. If things are livable, people probably aren't going to get sick. If things are chilly, they might get sick. If things are cold, they will get sick. If things are very cold, they're going to get really sick. And if things are freezing, well, you're going to have problems. The main things that affect the heating in your city are the weather, your base insulation heating levels, your insulation tech upgrades, the generator power level while something is in a heat zone heaters themselves within buildings and the overdrive these are the ways that you can generate heat within your city and for one final reiteration about heat zones remember anything that is within the range of a generator or within the range of a steam hub is what we call within a heat zone a structure is either in or not in a heat zone only things that are in a heat zone will be affected by the power level of the generator if something is not in a heat zone it will not be affected by these switches that you're pushing here 
each of these levels increases the heating by one. Level one is plus one heating, level two is plus two heating, level three is plus three, and level four is plus four. With an overdrive at level four, you can increase the heat on a structure by plus six levels. That's incredible, and it's something you're gonna need to do on the main new home scenario. And I do believe that covers it for just about everything related to heating. One final fact I'd like to make sure to drive into you is remember to turn off your overdrive because the consequences of not doing so are catastrophic. We'll end this episode by showing exactly what happens if you forget to turn off your overdrive and it ain't pretty. I will see you guys in the next episode. Don't let this happen to you. Y'all take care and I'll see you in the next one.